This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Dowby, Interim President of Middlesex Community College, and my guest today is Larry McHugh, President of the Best Chamber of Commerce in the World. Did I say that right? Uh, perfect. And the sun always shines in Middlesex County. I learned that right away. So I have been at Middlesex Community College just a few months, and the very first person I came to see was Larry McHugh. And you've been president of the chamber since 83. Did right. I do my homework right? Perfectly, let's, Jonathan. Let's go back all the way. You taught at some at one point at Xavier High School. And you taught, as, as far as I can see, biology, history, physical science, phys ed. Were there any other teachers in the building? There were a few. But you, in the beginning, uh, we all had to uh, share, as we're talking about, and the Governor Malloy is talking about shared uh, uh, pain. Uh, at that time, uh, we did what we called shared teaching. Uh, he moved around a little shared bit. Shared joy, I guess. Joy. I was certified in a lot of different areas. So, so, so where did you go to college? Where did you grow up? Uh, New Haven. Uh, then uh, I uh, went to Notre Dame or West Haven. I went out to Kansas for a couple of years, and I came back and uh went to Southern Connecticut State University. I graduated from there, got my degree from there. Uh, then I signed with the uh, New York Titans of the American Football League, uh, played with them for a while, uh, broke my foot in numerous places, released, and uh, got a job in Durham uh, teaching 7th uh, and 8th grade science with Wally Camp. And uh, really, that was uh, I was going to back with the uh, New York Jets, which was the team the following year. Uh, but the Xavier job opened up, and I made a decision that uh, I would go into coaching in 63 and stayed there till 83, 21 years of coaching, teaching, and fundraising, and then in 83 went to the uh, chamber. Came to the chamber. When you came to the chamber in 1983, how many dues-paying members were there? We had, uh, at that time, we had 287, and we were uh, about $139,000 in debt. Uh, with a budget of around ninety-five thousand. And how many dues-paying members do you have now? We got we're we're over twenty-four hundred uh, members, and our budget uh, is about uh, this year should be about two point two million. So you multiplied it by about ten, if if my math is correct. Right. Wow, that's incredible. This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Dowby, and we'll be back. This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Dowby, interim president of Middlesex Community College. And my guest today is Larry McHugh, president of the Chamber of Commerce in Middlesex County and chair of the Yukon Board, of course. Uh, you've been doing the chamber job since 1983, and we've just been talking. The chamber membership has gone up by about a factor of 10. Now, if you stay another 20, 30 years, is it going to go up by another factor of 10? No, I think we're our our, pen, our penetration uh, rate is pretty high right now. Uh, although we're having our biggest uh, new membership in the chamber this year, this fiscal year, uh, probably uh, way above at least double what we had projected out. Uh, it's amazing that we continue to to uh, get new members. It looks like probably uh, our new members this year are strongly over the twenty four hundred uh, figure. I'd like to get, eventually get up to twenty five hundred, so that'll be our goal over the next uh, couple of years. So let me ask you an obvious kind of question. Let's say I am a small business person. I've just moved into Middlesex County. Uh, I maybe have one employee as, uh, in addition to myself. I'm watching every single penny. Why would I want to want to join the chamber? Well, today was a prime example of it. We're down in Haddam uh, for a meeting of the uh, chamber. As you know, we've got divisions all throughout Middlesex County. Right. Uh, we had the lieutenant governor come in to speak, and there were almost 50 uh, business people there. Uh, they had the opportunity at that meeting to uh, talk to uh, Eileen Daly was there. Our, uh, our the senator. Uh, the senator. Our new uh, state rep was there, Phil Miller. Uh, and also uh, the, the uh, both uh, the, the first selectman of East Haddam wasn't there, but the first selectman of Haddam was there. And the first selectman of East Haddam always goes, gives them an opportunity once a month to meet with the elected type of people, hear a speaker, and then network amongst that. And then on top of that, to expand their business, we have their business after works where we get between 200 and in our big one, which we get about 1,300 at the Crown Plaza in October. And every month you have an opportunity to go to a breakfast with five to 900 your closest friends and network 
uh, to build up on the contact. So uh, from that level, uh, you have it. And then the chamber is a voice of business, so we would support all of our businesses in the planning and zoning commissions, uh, inland wetlands, a lot of the commissions that, uh, a lot of areas that chambers don't normally get in, involved in. We go out and we help our gas stations out. Uh, we have an automotive division of the chamber. Uh, so we broke the chamber down into these constituent groups, town, and then automotive, real estate, insurance, manufacturing, uh, HR, all these different committees we have so people can uh, really have an opportunity to pick up a lot of knowledge and also network in their various So, so what I'm hearing is this new person, notional new person coming into town, by the time a few months have gone, they'll have met a whole lot of people that they otherwise wouldn't have met. And you'll be of, of specific assistance to them in zoning and whatever. Which is important uh, for a new business if they do come in, uh, that uh, they have an ally to help them out, uh, especially with restaurants and some of these areas, gas stations, where you normally wouldn't think they'd be members of a chamber. Uh, we got a lot of them. Also, on top of that, we got a big manufacturing base spread throughout Middlesex mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we spent a lot of time working with manufacturers. Now, now when, when I say Middlesex, you think Middlesex uh, County Chamber of Commerce. I think Middlesex Community College, of course. Which is very important to the uh, whole county. You said and, exactly the right thing, Mr. Uh, McHugh. You are, you're right. I noticed that both Wesleyan University and Middlesex Community College are members, full members of the chamber. Why is that important? Well, both uh, Wesleyan, uh, we deal with Wesleyan quite a bit because uh, they're they're here. Uh, they're in your in backyard. backyard. And you guys and Middlesex Community College is also. Uh, Wesleyan uh, is important to us because of the amount of activity they bring in on an ongoing situation with our hotels and restaurants. They have a lot of people visiting the campus, a lot of people from outside the area. So all year long, uh, the inn in Middletown has Wesleyan people in it. Uh, and also with the sports team, They fill it up weekends, Bowdoin, Bates, right. and these different schools. Middlesex Community College is very important to us because they are the future workforce uh, of our region. Uh, our graduates tend to stay, stay in, the, here. in the area. Where yeah. Wesleyan would be in, not in that area. Uh, only a few will stay. Uh, but uh, in, the, in the case of the community college, hopefully after two years, they end up going to uh, CSU or to uh, UConn, uh, continue their education here in the state of Connecticut, and stay here to fuel the economics of, uh, of our region in the state of Connecticut. Now, why would, if you had to persuade one of your chamber members that uh, spending a few tax dollars on community colleges and the universities is probably not a bad idea, why, why is it important for the chamber The, most chamber members, of course, are not in higher education, they're in business. Why is it important for them that you have Wesleyan, that you have Middlesex Community College uh, on their radar screen? And uh, all the CSU system schools are members, along of with the UConn. We don't have, Connecticut is a very, very high state uh, for dollars uh, to do business in. Uh, energy costs are very high, uh, wages are very high, benefit costs are high. Uh, the only thing we have in our quiver to go after businesses to keep them here is an educated workforce. Therefore, it is yeah. very, very important. Higher ed maintains the dollars they got coming in because it is vital if we want the economics to continue in the state of Connecticut that we have an educated workforce. So that's why it's so important. Now, is the community college system, in your view, flexible enough that they serve the needs of today rather than the yesterday? <laughs> They have become more flexible, uh, and so is uh, CSU and UConn. Uh, this is uh, over a period of years. I've been involved in higher ed since 1983. Uh, I think there's a, a major change in that. Uh, the involvement uh, is very, very important that the they move quickly with businesses to adapt to what businesses are doing. But still there is a strong need uh, that a lot of both uh, the community colleges and in, in, in cases of CSU, have gotten away, away somewhat from the needs of the manufacturing base and some of those other areas uh, that are very important. And not it, it hasn't been their fault. Uh, basically, uh, the state has not made the investment that they should make in some of these areas that are vital to growth in, in, in our region, that we have to remember that manufacturing is still very important. And um, even the technical schools uh, have gotten away from really manufacturing uh, as a driver for jobs. They tend to do more towards uh, automotive and some of the other areas, uh, 
barber, hair, uh, haircuts, uh, all of that, uh, because that's where the kids are going into. But we have to maintain this manufacturing base, and that worries me more than anything else because uh, manufacturing has leveled off, uh, but uh, there's still a need to replace a lot of these people that will be moving out of the workforce in the future, so that's vital to us. And, and that's a state problem. It's not, it's not just... Uh, you know, the, the community colleges or CSU or UConn and higher ed uh, or uh, all of our public, uh, you know, uh, high schools. Uh, but we really have to start to address this uh, problem we have. Well, you talked a bit about investment in higher education, and I guess right now is not the year to talk about that. So let me move past that. Well, but I think I think it is uh, because I, I don't think do. we can I, I don't think we can afford to step back. Uh, we are going to have to suffer some pain, but uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say uh, that uh, if we want to turn the workforce around to create more jobs, if we don't have higher ed as an integral player in that, that we won't have the success to attract new businesses to Connecticut, to allow those businesses here to grow without a highly educated workforce. Therefore, there has to be pain given to everybody in the state of Connecticut, but we have to also recognize if we want to create the jobs that the governor does and the legislature does and both of us do, we better have a highly educated workforce. So Therefore, we can't go on the cheap. So what specifically would you like to see the new president pay of Middlesex Community College pay attention to when he or she shows up? We, uh, you know, Wilfredo and yourself have both take uh, have both done a great job getting involved uh, with with us since you've been here. And Wilfredo, uh, uh, when when he was at the community college, who's now at Capital board, Community Capital, College, uh, who, who's <clears throat> on our board uh, as you're on our board of directors. So you have an opportunity uh, all the time to listen to our board people, to network with them, to talk to them, and then to go back with that information, which is more important coming from them than me, uh, to adapt to some of the things that you might think. Uh, uh, is going to be beneficial for both the college and also uh, the business community. Well, obviously, the community college and the chamber have one thing in common. They're very interested in growth. Uh, you have grown an institution multiplied by 10, which is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, when you came in, go back to 1983, you were facing a debt at the chamber, you are, I assume it was a risk to take this job on at that time. Uh, what were the first things you did to get out of, a, out of debt and to increase the membership? I went out and I visited with uh, all of the uh, uh, members that had dropped out of the chamber first. And ah, then that's smart. You visited with people who dropped rather than the people who were there, there already. Right, and, and, yeah. and those... Uh, uh, businesses in the community that I had dealt with when I was a fundraiser for Mercy and Xavier that were not involved in the chamber and f asking them why they weren't. And I got a message back loud and clear, and I took that message to the board. So that's as if a college president visited not with the best students, which is always tempting, but with the students who've dropped out for various reasons. Right. Uh, and found them somehow by phone or whatever and talked to them. Right. And then brought the picture back. This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Dowby, and we'll be back momentarily. This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Jonathan Dowby, Interim President of Middlesex Community College. And my guest today is Larry McHugh, the President of the Middlesex County Chamber of Commerce, right? It's Middlesex County. It's not just Middletown or this town or that town. Right. It's the, and... When you look at the membership list, it's amazing how many people outside Middlesex County choose to belong. So we've been talking a bit about how you grow, how you grew it in the 80s, I guess, and 90s. And you first visited with people who dropped out, people who were not happy with you. What did you learn from that? Uh, that the chamber never made a stand on anything. Uh, 
that was the the major thing that I came back and went to the board and I said to the board that from now on the chamber has to get out and support businesses even on tough issues that there might be the case of some members dropping out like we have had on some of our stands but we had to be consistent in getting out in big planning and zoning commissions and other areas with inland wetlands uh, with the different towns uh, even though they were very controversial these issues we had to be there and put the business community with a with a face on so, now so let's go back to the <clears throat> 80s and 90s what was the single most controversial issue you had to deal with at that time uh, the first one was basically up at uh, in Cromwell with the Edgewood Country Club at that time and the tournament players uh, were moving out of Wethersfield to there and they oh, needed yeah. a new golf course and all of the residents around up there went into an uproar. They did not want uh, a new golf course. They felt the traffic would be uh, detrimental to them, this and that. Basically, I had uh, people that uh, I had coached and taught their kids at Xavier uh, that were pretty much uh, adamant. I'm glad they didn't have blogs back then. What I had told them that the investment in a new golf course that would be run by the PGA is going to take their housing values up. They didn't believe it, but now they realize we were right. Uh, the other issue is, which is controversial, is that we were the first chamber in Connecticut to get out and support box stores. Uh, that was a, a no-no, but uh, we did a lot of research on it, and we found out that the box store created... Uh, the area where the small businesses could feed off the box with the box doing the advertising and would bring the big traffic areas into it. Uh, and Walmart would be an example in Stop and Shop, which we supported. <clears throat> and basically, that was also an area where we lost a lot of members. Uh, but afterwards, they did come back. And we, you know, you look over in Cromwell, you had a strip center across the street from Walmart that was 80% uh, uh, vacant. At that point, now it's 100% full. There's but your major point is that a chamber needs to take a stand on things, right. even if it's a little bit risky. Right. And I, I imagine you're doing that right now about some issue that may be coming up. Oh, the rail, you know. the rail line from uh, the the rail line from uh, uh, Old Saybrook to uh, Hartford. Uh, there's people in the town of Haddam that doesn't want the rail line to go through. Basically, uh, some of them built over the line. Uh, this is going to be very important in the in the future because freight has to be moved. If we want to clear the roads out, we got to move freight into rail instead of over the roads. And we we could have here uh, in Middlesex County, uh, one of the few freight lines, basically, that uh, can access both New Haven Harbor uh, and also uh, access uh, the Saybrook area. Well, I think you should buy anyone who objects a free ticket to France, Italy, or Great Britain, where, or Germany, where they can see freight moving and they can see the countryside thriving around that. They, they they don't need to be afraid of this if it's done right. Right. Obviously, it has to be done right. You were talking a bit about, about infrastructure and the state's need for infrastructure, roads, bridges, and so on. Of course, we're right in the middle of the state. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, I think it's important that we use two things. The Aragone Bridge is uh, go, uh, undergoing some renovation. Right. Uh, and I, you want to be the deep-sea diver who goes down and... Checks, checks it, checks it uh, out, which I think, well, I'll go down there if I have to because I think it's important if we're going to spend millions of dollars on the top of the bridge and not look what's under the water. And a bridge, as we say, it's the right. best 1938 bridge. Also said that we should have another bridge built and keep that one. Second of all, I think the uh, we have to really look at bridges and roads, which creates a lot of jobs, but more importantly, the infrastructure and in our universities. I feel that uh, you know Middlesex uh, should be at the plate. We need new buildings at Middlesex. Uh, he's doing a great job there. Uh, there's a growth area in this region, both in population uh, compared to the rest of the state. Definitely uh, a strong business uh, proponent here, and we need to create infrastructure at the community college to help us with this growth to go forward in the new technology and everything that's happening You know, happening there's one the thing that, that a lot of people don't know about Middlesex Community College, but they will if they visit. The site is, is wonderful. The buildings are mediocre, frankly. But the, the site is incredible. You walk up there and there are woods and fields and God knows what. I mean, the, it reduces your blood pressure right away. Perhaps not as we speak where the snow is and the ice is still around, but it's absolutely beautiful. And you should know as president of the chamber that we're just completing 
a, a strategic plan for the college. And we've talked to people in the community, and we've talked to you know, people at, at the baccalaureate institutions, the four-year institutions, we've talked to the high schools, and I think you'll be pleased with what you see. And I think out of that, perhaps not this year, but out of that will come a very good case for, for contemporary building, either here or possibly in Meriden, where we have a center, uh, and Meriden is, in fact, the largest city in our service area. It's not Middletown. And I see you smiling because I know you say the sun never sets on, on, on Middletown, uh, Middlesex County, and Meriden technically is outside, but anyway, it's inside for our purposes. And your point is well taken. I think uh, building roads, bridges, colleges, whatever, does add to jobs. Well, and these are skilled jobs. It puts a lot of people to work, and yeah. people think it's just the people that pound the nails, but it's engineers, oh, no. it's architects, it's uh, lawyers. It's uh, You go right through the whole spectrum. And on top of that, the vast majority of these people, when they are working full-time, spend their money here uh, in the region. You know, They're not spending it in the Bahamas. They're spending it here, they're buying the extra TV. They're buying a new car. They're doing all that. And that's why it's important that we put these construction trades to work and the satellites to that. I mean, we've got architectural firms in Hartford that at one time had 150 employees that are down to 45 or 50. we got to fill that vacuum right. and get more right. people to work. And with that, now uh, our university system becomes a stronger feeder uh, whether it's the community college, UConn, or CSU, for the workforce in some of these areas like engineering and architectural design and a lot of these areas could be job growth areas, but now these people are moving out of Connecticut and fueling the economic growth in the South or Midwest. Right. Well, let's talk a bit about the future in the few minutes we have. Uh, you have a new president coming in at UConn. You're going to have a new president at Middlesex Community College. Hopefully the two of them will get together pretty fast. What do you want to see them do in the next five years, both of them? Reach out to the business community, work with the business community uh, in a partnership, uh, similar to, uh, and also to for the Yukon situation, uh, to make sure that uh, we can have the transferring the credits uh, like we do at the community colleges now, which I know that you were yep. very, very instrumental in doing with the with CSU when I was chair of that. So and that, with UConn. And with UConn, yep. so that students can go to the community colleges for two years, transfer their credits to either UConn or the uh, or CSU, and then I think your heart forward. is still somewhat with CSU, isn't it? Well, I was there yeah. for I was there from eighty three to nine uh, to two thousand nine, so it was a long, long time. My heart is with UConn now, uh, but uh, you know I I still believe in the values of of CSU. They're a teaching institution. We're research. I believe in the community colleges with expenses the way they are today more and more people are going to take the option of going to Middlesex Community College for two years and then go to Southern, Central, Western, and Eastern and Yukon just because of the cost situation. And the other area we're finding, as you saw in the paper yesterday, Yukon's applications have skyrocketed. And Yukon mm -hmm. has gone from uh, 25 years ago uh, a safe school to one now that's very, very tough to get into. And people are making decisions with their pocketbooks uh, they can't afford the, the uh, Ivy Leagues or the Little Ivies, so they're making choices to go to, the, to our schools, and that's very, very important because we'll educate them, keep them here, get them employed here, and then the state well, of Connecticut will move forward. I advise people, go to a community college first, learn how to study, then go on to a CSU or a UConn or wherever, and then for your terminal degree or your master's or whatever it is, then maybe if you want to go to an Ivy, fine, so be it. People will judge you by the last degree you have. Once you have an associate's degree, nobody cares where you went to high school. Once you have bachelor's, nobody cares where you went to community college and all the, all the way up. And I've seen that happen, happen so often. I have to say this uh, to our listeners. Your support, President of the Chamber, your support of the whole system, community colleges, CSU, UConn, and even the privates, uh, it's really, really important because that's what's going to get, get UConn out of our present fiscal issue. Back to the chamber for a minute. What's your major goal in the next five years? 
uh, to really to continue. Because you're not going to retire ever, right? No, no. I don't okay. know about that. We'll, we'll but, say uh, for the next couple of years, I, uh, the major goal is to continue uh, Middlesex County as an economic uh, area, a region in the state of Connecticut that's growing, uh, a region that will continue to support the business community. And one thing I have learned from you is your constant encouragement of other people. Every single meeting, you pick out some people that you, you praise, and they all smile, and they go off motivated, and it makes a difference. Positive That's, attitude, just like you, Jonathan. Ab- absolutely, you got to have it. Absolutely. At least 24-7, if not more. Right. This has been Middlesex Moments. My guest has been Larry McHugh, president of the Middlesex County Chamber of Commerce. Take a look at our website, mxcc.comnet, two M's in there, comnet.edu. I'm Jonathan Darby, interim president of Middlesex Community College. Have a good day.